this is Scott Spears, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Scott Spears Now. Tonight our guest, legendary actor William Kett, star of TV's The Greatest American Hero. I know you remember that red suit, along with Robert Culp and Connie Selica, as well as guest-starring roles in the Perry Mason movies, in which he guest-starred with his mother, Barbara Hale, who is the original and one and only Della Street. He's also done a lot of great Broadway work, stage work, and was in the movie Carrie. Do you remember him in that? We have fun talking with William Kett on this edition of Scott Spears Now. This is Scott Spears, and today the guest is a great actor of stage, screen, and television. You, you probably know him best as Ralph Hinckley the lead character in The Greatest American Hero. I'm very glad to say our guest is William Kett. Bill, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Scott. Always a pleasure to see you. Uh, we haven't spoken. Last time we spoke, if I remember right, uh, I'll remember it better than you will, because uh, I'm sure you do a lot of these, but was the uh, day, I think, after Robert Culp passed away. Yes, yes, the late, great Robert Culp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 a, a dear friend and a, and a great loss, uh, not only to me personally, but uh, he was a, a wonderful talent. You know? A very uh, sharp guy. He's one of the few interviews that I remember well from this program, uh, and, and just from the little bit of time that I knew him, he was so exact with everything he did. Very sharp guy. Very sharp. Extremely sharp guy, and uh, I, I learned uh, most of everything I learned about writing, although I was a aspiring writer at the time uh, so many years ago uh, most of what I learned about writing came with working Bob, with Bob on that show and I'll tell you something he always thought of himself to the day he died uh, and even in uh, when he was eulogized in uh, his memoriam um, in the weeks following his uh, passing uh, everybody talked of him as a writer first he thought of himself as a writer as a director and then as an actor in, in that order you know, and everybody said that uh, most, uh, uh, most importantly, his children. Mm. A great guy, certainly a. Uh, I, I just recently heard Bill Cosby's eulogy from that time, and what uh, he did breaking those color barriers at that time that I Spy was on was quite amazing. Yeah, yeah, you you got to remember that uh, he won his uh, his uh, Emmy award, not his Emmy, his uh, yeah. His, his television, his award, his Emmy, from, uh, from a show that uh, Bob had written and directed yeah. on I Spy, you know? Truly a fascinating guy and, and definitely missed, and I think even going too soon. You know, I, I believe he was 80 years old. Was that what it was, Bill? No, he was 79. 79, 79. And he was so fit, and I had seen him just the week, the week before, and, uh, and he uh, had plans. He was directing a film that he had written that summer. Uh, with Hilly Elkins uh, was involved. Hilly was his longtime manager and a very dear friend. And um, we lost, coincidentally enough, we lost Hilly that that very same year, uh, several months later. But uh, Bob was was very very healthy. He was taking his morning uh, 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 walk around the block where he lived in Hollywood, yeah, a nice place over there. And uh, he just that fast he was gone. You know. Had plans. He, I, they played uh, his voicemail from that morning uh, with with one of his sons. They were going to go meet and have lunch and go uh, see a film. You know, it can happen that quick. Yeah. Yeah, it happens that quick. You know, uh, uh, Bill, I was going to ask you about this later on in the interview, but since this is the way it's gone, um, there are a lot of uh, rumors that you and he did not get along. Is there any truth to that? Well. Well, yeah, yeah, I've, I've mentioned it in the past. I mean, that's not just a rumor. That was uh, just a fact. Uh, Bob and I didn't get along very well for the first several weeks. And uh, at some point in that pilot when we were doing it, in the first uh, two or three weeks, we, uh, we got together in the afternoon. And I remember knocking on his trailer door, and I said, uh, uh, Robert, we're going to be together for a long time, and uh, let's see if we can reach some sort of detente. And uh, uh, so that we can have a working arrangement and, uh, and get along. Uh, so we did, and we ended up being good friends. But oddly enough, um, I think that, that that tension that we had there initially in the show really worked uh, to the benefit of that 
kind of uh, peculiar chemistry, that lightning in a bottle that we had in, that, in the casting of that show with, with Bob and myself and, and Connie. You know, I think it really, really worked, that the characters didn't like each other, and in real life, we didn't like each other. Uh, I'm not speaking of Connie, who I <laughs> dearly love, but, um, but Bob and I. But we ended up being great friends, and we were for the duration of his life, you know. When's the last time you saw, saw Connie Selica? I saw, last time I saw Connie, we sat at Bob's Memorial. Mm. Um, when the late, great uh, Stephen Cannell passed uh, a, a year or so afterwards, um, I remember um, Connie couldn't come because her mother was failing at the time. So she had to be back east and she couldn't come. So I, I uh, retrieved some of the uh, literature that was, that was at uh, uh, Stephen's uh, uh, memorial service and I, I left it up at her and John's, uh, John's place in their, in their mailbox. But, uh, but before that, the last time I saw her was, was with, uh, we sat together at the services for Robert. What was it about that cast, the three of you that just worked so well? You know, I don't know. It's, uh, it's like one of those great mysteries it's, uh, that, uh, that happens with a good TV series. You know, you, there's some wonderful sh TV shows on the air right now, uh, and there have been in the past. Uh, All in the Family, Andy Griffith's show, I mean, uh, uh, Bones, uh, 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 lots of shows that are on the air that are just, you can't explain how the chemistry works, but it just works. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the it, it makes the show better than it ordinarily would have been, and, it, and it's inexplainable. You know, it's kind of interesting because you talk about in the beginning, not getting along terribly well with uh, Bob Culp, but yet the chemistry worked, and maybe there have been other series or movies you have done where you've liked the people personally better, but the chemistry's not there. Is it possible to go in and be able to deal with people that you don't really like and come out with a success? Oh, yeah, just because the set is nice, is a nice place to be, and you're having fun with the people on the set, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be magic on film or nowadays uh, on, on that digital camera. You know, it just, uh, one is not synonymous with the other. You know, there can be real tension and you can see two actors that you find out uh, later on that they just didn't like each other, but somehow or other uh, the, the chemistry on camera worked, you know. Does the writing have to be good? Oh, I, I think absolutely. I mean, without, you know, without a, a good script, without good writing, the, it, it, nothing happens. You know, that's the foundation. That's the blueprint. You know, whether it's in the theater or, or it's in television or film, it has to be, the writing has to be there. Yeah, of course. When the actor gets a script that they don't necessarily think is great. Can they turn it around? Um, I, I, I think so. I mean, um, I've worked on projects where the script was not great, and then the actors get on stage and uh, in the theater. You know, this has happened many times, and uh, or in. Uh, or on, on a television show, or a, more often than the, is the case uh, on an indie film, and uh, and you turn it into something on the day, you know, because you have a lot of uh, if you have the right, you know, uh, amalgam of, uh, of, of 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 talent, and and everyone is willing, you know, if uh, if the egos get in the way, then of course nothing happens, you know. How did you get the role on Greatest American Hero? I was um, I was doing a show um, with the wonderful Diana Weist. I was uh, doing an off-Broadway play with uh, her and I. I think we're the only uh, add-ons in New York off-Broadway. Off and uh, we joined a cast that was coming from the Guthrie. Um, and we, uh, we did a play called Bonjour la Bonjour, a Michel Tremblay play. 
and uh, her and I were playing uh, incestuous brother and sister mm. uh, in a play uh, that was written by this Canadian uh, author. And uh, Steve sent me a script. Uh, my agent at the time, uh, wonderful Michael Black uh, at ICM, uh, sent me the script. He said, please take a read. So I read it and it was, I was, you know, laughing out loud. And he said, well, Stephen would like to fly back and meet with you. So I, he flew back and we went out to, to uh, he took me out to dinner after the show. He, you know, sat through the show and uh, I agreed to do it. My hair was very, was as dark as yours, I think, at the time, because I was playing a French Canadian. Mm. And um, so the night we finished on a Sunday night, I was on a plane that night back to L.A. And I dyed my hair back to my normal color and a natural blonde, and I always have been. And uh, so I became a blonde the next day, and we started. I was promised it wouldn't last more than four shows, and I could go back to New York and be on the stage. And uh, <laughs> of course, as fate would have it, it turned out to be a, 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 a fairly big hit, uh, well respected and liked by by the public. And uh, you know, I think more so as time went on, it became more well liked. But. Uh, it's odd in a 45-year career that that's what I'm probably most remembered for that, or uh, or Carrie, or or the film House that I did, the wonderful independent, you know. But no one no one remembers me for the uh, just uh, just uh, a lot of theater that I did off Broadway, Lord Theater in L.A. and whatnot. But no one no one remembers that, you know. They only remember for what they they remember you, you know, the red suit. <laughs> but, uh, but that's okay. It, it made a lot of people happy, and I'm. I'm, I'm okay. Tell me about that red suit. When you saw the thing for the first time and knew you were going to have to wear this in every episode, what'd you think, honestly? Oh well, you know it's right there on it's right there on film. I mean, when I looked in the mirror there on that pilot, and I kind of acted a little bit swishy and made fun of myself, and you know I was thinking to myself, well, there goes your career, you know, <laughs> and. Uh, so I felt the way the, like the, the character felt about the suit. You know, I felt, oh my God, there it goes. I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm making a fool of myself in public. But um, but I did come to love the suit and have a lot, have a great deal of fun and respect. And I think the more that I I realized that the public really um, uh, identified with the everyman kind of quality. That, that the problems that I was having with it, that they would, they could identify with it. And so, you know, you, you grow an affection for it, and that's what happened, you know? Did you keep the suit? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you have to remember, there was no, there was no eBay, there was no, uh, there were no, uh, uh, these Comic-Cons and things like that. There was, there was none of that then. So, uh, no, no, I didn't, I didn't keep the suit. I wish I had. My, my stuntman, Dennis Matalone, was still one of my dearest friends. He kept the suit that he wore for a lot of the stunts, and he still has that. With all the holes and everything in it, yeah. You know, uh, uh, it's kind of interesting to me. I was looking today, and uh, Greatest American Hero did not have a traditionally long run, but I seem to remember it running longer, and I think most people do. It. it why didn't it run longer? Um, you know, that's a mystery. I don't know if we'll ever really know the answer. Um, I think it, it could have. Um, it, 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 it could have, you know, but they put us on against uh, Dallas at the time, who the, the, was the number one show. They, they moved us to a Friday night. When they did that, they pretty much, you know, most of the shows that they put in that time slot, they put them there to die. And I think that's what happened. Uh, there was a lot of political turmoil. I think Bob Culp and somebody at ABC wasn't getting along. And Steve Cannell had lost his oldest son, Derek, a year or so earlier. Um, I just think that the heart of the show went out. Uh, oddly enough, about a year and a half afterwards, it was doing so well in syndication, they called me and asked me to come back, and they would put the show on the air for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, give us all a bump in salary and perks and whatever else. But uh, I was busy doing the Perry Mason specials at the time uh, at NBC, and I I was really happy to be working a little bit less uh, than the typical 16-hour days 
you know, and uh, never seeing my family. Uh, I was happy to do a movie, uh, do four or five movie of the weeks, and then do a film and yeah. do some theater. I mean, so I was happy to not go back and do it, you know? I, I want to get uh, to Perry Mason in here in just one second, but I want to ask one more question about Greatest American Hero. I was kind of shocked a few years ago to see you at the TV Land Awards dangling from the ceiling in that suit again, a suit, a version of yeah. that suit. Was that nostalgic? Was it fun? Did you like doing that? Well, no, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I have a pretty big fan base out there, you know, that follows uh, The Greatest American Hero. I have a, a, a Facebook page. Uh, not me personally, but a, a great gal, Marcy Boku, who runs that page for me. And we've become uh, great friends, and she does a great job with it. And, uh, and you know, I had fans that kind of uh, thought it would be fun, and, and I agreed with them, and it was... It was kind of a, uh, a coming to terms uh, with uh, with my relationship with the red suit and having a lot of fun with it. And the people at TV Land uh, and the award show there are, are so gracious and lovely. It's hard to say no when they ask you to come and do something. They're just lovely people. I do want to get to the Perry Mason series now because I don't know if most people know this, but your mother is Barbara Hale, who was Della Street in that classic, classic television series. The first yeah. thing I want to, what's it like to grow up with a famous mother? Uh, well, I, 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 I never knew the difference. You know, my father too, Bill Williams, was a, was a fairly well-known actor at the time. Uh, you know, a cowboy actor did Kit Carson and Date with the Angels with Betty White and a, a lot of television and stuff. So I had two very, very well-known uh, uh, parents um, but I didn't know the difference, you know. How do, how do you know the difference? I had nothing to compare it to. I thought that was normal. Did you think your friends' lives were different than yours? No, no. Same thing? No. That's interesting. No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm still friendly with a lot of the kids that I grew up with. And, uh, you know, although, you know, they're attorneys and doctors and... Uh, some of them are high-ranking military officials and uh, high-ranking in Homeland Security. I mean, we're all just, uh, you know, the kids from the block, you know? When did you decide you wanted to go into the same business as your parents? Um, probably um, college sometime, you know. You know, I, 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 college sometime. I mean, I, mean, I was always, uh, I grew up you know, a beach kid and around boats and surfing and whatnot, but I, I thought I was going to be a pilot for years, you know, I was flying all over the time, you know, the time I got my license and, uh, you know, I went into the, you know, into the service at some point and, but I was also doing some acting, you know, as a kid uh, and I did music as a kid and I enjoyed working with wood in my hands, so I, I think it was, um, I think it was up for grabs what I wanted to do, but like everybody, you know, you start making money in a certain profession and that's what you pursue, you know? Why did you want to do what you're doing? I mean, reporting, you probably, something happened and you go, oh, that's kind of my passion and, and that's what I like to do. And that's, that, I was a, I was in the theater. I started with, you know, my career started at Orange Coast College and working with David Ems and Martin Benson when they were, uh, you know, at the third stage theater down there when they were with South Coast Repertory. I mean, uh, I, that's where I started. So I was a theater junkie, you know? Knowing that it's a bit of a hard business, a lot of rejection, I think, in acting. I've never done it, but I think most people would attest to that. Your mother and father had to have, I think, known that a little bit. Were they encouraging to you? Uh... Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, they were they were both good parents. My father wanted me to get an education, which I, I did to some degree. I got two years of school, and, you know, he wanted me to do some other things, which, which I did. You know, and my mother was, uh, you know, my mother, I think, was more artistic. My father was a, was a very German, proud uh, kind of guy. He wanted an education, and he wanted me to get familiar how to use my hands and you know you know change a, a light or a wall socket or how to hammer a nail and do things like I did go into the you know 
when I went into the guard and the service and come out. I mean, there were certain things that, you know, you want, and you and I was a pleaser. I wanted to please both of them. So I, I, I think that I accomplished that, you know. When the Raymond Burr franchise was revived in the 1980s, of course, your mom was back to work. Della Street was back yeah. in action. And yeah. you got a chance to work with mom. In that I did. I well, she, we worked together on, uh, I think the first time we worked together, well, I did her show, Perry Mason, when I was a kid, a day of work. Uh, but we did, she did Big Wednesday. She played my mom on Big Wednesday, the John Millius film that I did with Gary Busey and Jan Michael Vincent. And she played my mom and just was wonderful in that. She, we also worked together on Greatest American Hero. We did that. She played my mom on that. And she was, did two episodes with us. Uh, so it wasn't the first time, but it was certainly uh, probably the most, uh, the most fun that I had because I got to work with her and Raymond on the set and uh, watch uh, the, the, the real shenanigans and the love affair that they had for one another and be a part of it and see it, you know, it was great. You know, they were dear, dear friends. When she was on set with you, is that mom or is that another actor? Oh, that's mom. Hmm. That's mom. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that, that's mom. I'm, I'm, but she's being somebody else. But I mean, we're being somebody else, but it's mom. Yeah. Uh, of course. Of course, as an actor, of course, uh, there is this. It's interesting. I think acting is very fascinating because you have to suspend your belief. For a second, uh, if you know the person, if if we know who Barbara Hale is as a person, we have to suspend our belief that that's Barbara Hale, even though Della Street yeah, looks like. Fine. Yeah, but I mean, come on. In life, when you're talking with friends, at certain points, you're, you know, you you're acting or you assume a certain posture, it's just like assuming a certain posture with a friend or something, you know. If you, and, and 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 that that's all it is, basically. But but yeah. I. Well, see, I, I've talked to different actors, and I'm not sure yet which I believe. Some people say that they are in every part they play, and then other people say if you see them in that part, they've not done their job. I'm not sure which is right. Is William Cat in every character you play? Well, of course, yeah. He's in my palette, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, I, use, I use him in everything that I, that I do, but I always try to go... A little bit outside of the box. I mean, I can be, you know, a sweetheart, and I can be psychotic, and I can be a, a, the biggest bastard you've ever seen. But I think that, you know, any, you know, I, I think any actor that's worth his salt can do all of those things. You know, I don't typically get to play all of those colors in film, but I've used all those colors in many different theatrical pieces I've done. You know. Uh, the, the, so, um, yeah, yeah, I think that there's something of me, there's something of every actor and everything, yeah. Tell me about Raymond Burr. Okay. What's, what was he like? Um, what did you say about Raymond? Just one of the loveliest gentlemen I've ever met. Uh, uh, truly gracious, uh, didn't talk a lot, at least not to me, um, but when he spoke, it meant something. Um, was a real uh, love to do pra have do practical jokes. Would never acknowledge the fact that he had done a practical joke or committed that <laughs> that crime. Uh, but uh, he was lovely and he was very philanthropic, which most people don't don't really know. Uh, you know, he he did a lot of wonderful things for many many different individuals. Um, over the span of decades, uh, and a little is said about that. You know, I, I don't want to go too deeply into this, but I can't think of anybody professionally who might have had a closer relationship with him than your mother, and certainly you. No. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. he passed away, there was obviously the news that wasn't so kind uh, at the time about his uh, private life that all of a sudden came to fruition. Yeah, it wouldn't be as big a deal today, but it was then. Yeah, it's like, so what? Yeah. I mean, come on. But why do you think he never opened up about that? Um, I, 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 well, I just don't think it was accepted at the time. I think, wasn't it, Rock Hudson was really the first, the first uh, individual that was a big star that really came out, you know? And uh, nowadays, uh, oh, my God. 
there's so many individuals. I mean, it's just a different era. It's a different time. My God. But, you know? but people around him, I assume, knew. It was not hidden. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, uh, you know, he, but, but, you know, he was, he was a very private man, you know, and uh, him and his relationship, I mean, we, Robert Benavides was his longtime uh, 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 partner and, and dear, dear friend, and, uh, but uh, nobody ever spoke of it, you know, they were just, I think that was, uh, that was just the time, you know. I, always, I, I felt he was treated quite unfairly, that that was what a lot of the headlines read. Well, well who the hell's business is it anyway? Exactly. You know? That's right. It wasn't anybody's it's business. It's no one's business. Right. However, someone wants to live their life. Absolutely. You know, he, was a, he was a decent man who was very, very talented and did wonderful things for people, you know? Absolutely. That's how, how I felt about it. Yeah. When you went back to do those Perry Mason movies after Raymond had passed away, what was that like? Well, um, well, I I didn't. By that time, uh, I had left the show to work on another Stephen Cannell show. I, I had gone to do Top of the Hill, and, and uh, uh, another actor took that role over with, uh, I think it was Billy Moses, with Alexandra Paul, an old friend of mine. They, they took over that show. I only did the first five years, and they did the next four. I, I didn't do all of them. They did 21 or 23, and I only did nine or 10 of them. How did your mom feel about going back and doing those without Raymond? You'd have to ask her that, but I'm... You know, Raymond was one of her oldest, dearest friends, so you can only imagine. But, you know, I think that she wanted to uh, uh, honor his, uh, the legacy of, of who he was, you know. I, I, what's the highlight of your career? What do you consider the, the brightest moment? Aside from right now in this interview with you? <laughs> I hope this is okay. <laughs> I hope it's not bad. <laughs> the, the brightest moments of my career? The brightest. Uh, the brightest? Yeah, the happiest uh, you've been. That's like that's like picking one of my... That's like asking someone to, to pick, well, which is your favorite child? Well, you know, it, it changes all the time, you know, one month to the next, or one year to the next, you know, you... It, I, I, I don't know. Um, certainly, uh, I, I can. My my favorites were were, were Carrie, greatest American hero was a favorite. Uh, Big Wednesday was a favorite. Um, the House was a favorite. The Steve Miner crafted film. Um, I, I really enjoyed um, anything that I did with John Milius was was wonderful. Uh, some of the projects that I've done. Uh, on the stage, certainly, working with Bob Fosse was a highlight of mine, doing Pippin uh, on stage with him uh, for the uh, Home Family Entertainment, the videotape that we did with, with Ben Vereen and Cheetah Rivera was great. I got to work with Marsha Norman, who won the Pulitzer Prize for Night Mother, and I did Sarah and Abraham with her, and, uh, and, uh, and, and Jack Hofsis, who won the Tony for Elephant Man. I got to I did two plays with him. Uh, I did Days of Wine and Roses on stage, the world premiere with him. I worked with Randy Newman uh, about five years ago. I did the, the education of Randy Newman in Seattle. I worked with Randy Newman for six months, and that was like taking a master's class every day. Uh, so there's been many, many things that I've done, you know, that I've, I'm really, really proud of. Any regrets? Um, yeah, I, th I, I think so. Uh, I, I should have taken a couple things that I didn't take um, many, many years ago. And, and honestly, uh, when I was in my younger life, in my 20s, and my when I was doing Hero or whatnot, around, around that era, era I, I, uh, I, I kind of was a, I, I got, I, I, I was unhappy in my life, and I think that I, I took that out on 
I misplaced that anger and, uh, and spewed that kind of venomous ugliness on people uh, that, that didn't deserve it. And uh, I think it hurt me at the time. And uh, I've spent the last 30 years of my life making amends. And uh, I think I've been a much better person, uh, uh, maybe because of it. You know, because I had a conscience and I, I, I recognized that in and of myself. And, and that's, you know, that's the only regret, you know, that I, big regret that I have. But uh, my life has been, by and large, pretty good. You know, and I, I still work all the time. You know, work as an actor. And uh, the last four or five years, I work with a dear friend, Chris Foligno, who has uh, a wonderful company, Sideshow Productions. And we've done more than 50 or 60 commercials in the last couple of years, so, uh, mainly toy commercials for Toys R Us, Konami, Jack Specific, you know, um, lots of companies like that, Spin Masters, and we, we you know, I, I work as a producer and a line producer for him, and um, I'm still doing that. We're getting ready to, to uh, do 11 commercials starting this next week, um, and he gives me time off to be an actor periodically, so... You know what? What more can I can I ask for? You know, still going my strong. Kids are all good. My kids are healthy. My wife's good. You know. Do you think there is a role? Do you think the biggest role of your career is yet to come, or do you think you've had it? Uh, gee, I don't know. I've 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 learned that. Uh, I I can never outguess what life is going to bring. You know, uh, and just when I think, you know, I, I suffer from whatever an actor goes through when they're doing a job, when a job finishes, every, every actor, I don't care who you are, says, well, I'm never going to work again. And then something happens and, you know, you're back in the saddle and something, something great comes along and sometimes it's better than, uh, than other times. But, you know, if nothing comes along, I'm happy. If something else comes along, I'm afraid. I, got, I have four films and five films in the can right now that I've done some pretty decent work on. Whether anybody sees them or not, I don't, I don't know. I'm certainly not in the, uh, on the radar of the studio system anymore, but I don't really care. I, I make a living, and, you know. I, I do very well, and I, I live a good life, and my kids are good, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm not hungry you know, to make a mark anymore, you know? If, and I don't have to go and pee on every tree on the block, you know? If somebody came to you right now and said, you can have any role career-wise you want, what would you do? Well, it would certainly be on stage. You know, I, I really love the stage. Um, and I don't know what that role would be. Uh, it would probably be a musical and it would be something on stage. What that might be, I, I don't know. Before we wrap up here, when we were talking about regrets there and you said there were a couple things you turned down, were those things that other people took that went on to become successful? Mm-hmm, yeah. Do you want to mention what they were? No. Okay, I no. respect that, no problem. Uh, when, when you watch something like that happen, when you turn a role down and it does go on and become successful, what does that feel like? Is it anger? Is it jealous? No. Is it... No, 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 because invariably uh, there's been other things that come up, you know. It's like, uh, you know, going on a date, you know. You say no to go on to a date and that, you know, that person goes on and, uh, you know, I dated a girl in, in school many, many years ago. And she went on to marry a billionaire, you know, and uh, and I was happy for her. There you go. You know, really happy for her for her life because if she had been with me, that wouldn't have happened. But here she was flying around in her own G4, and you know, and having a very very good life, and I was happy for her. And you know, to to a varying degree, that's that's true with life, and I think that's true with everybody. I I don't think I speak just for for me personally. I think that that's something to some degree or another it happens to everybody you know you're definitely still a young man you've got good genes mom's still going strong so this is yeah. not 
Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So this this is not a uh, question that anybody will have to answer anytime soon. But a uh, hundred years from now, when Greatest American Hero is still playing and and uh, Carrie is still playing, and they say that's that's William Cat, that's Bill Cat. Who is that guy? How do you want them to remember you? Um. Well, I just hope that they remember. Uh, I hope that people remember me as as a good guy. You know, I, I, I invariably, that's what I think about. I'd like to be remembered as a, a good man, a good guy. Mm-hmm. A guy who did what he said he was going to do. And, uh, you know, you know I, I, I yearn for the respect of my peers, both in my personal life and in my profession. What more can you ask? Well, I have to say, this has been a, a lot of fun. It really has, uh, Bill. I appreciate you uh, for coming on the show. And I, like everybody else, uh, have been a fan of your work. Um, there was something special, I think, when you were on the screen. It's very uh, rare. I, you know, I'm sure people have made more money, and I'm sure people are more recognizable. But um, you have a certain place, I think, in people's minds and memories and hearts, even because of what you've done and i think that's kind of a special thing so it's been a, a lot of fun to talk to you give my yeah give my regards to your mother i hope i hope one day we can get her on yeah well you know what i'll uh, after tonight i'll i'll get her on the phone I, I hope to speak with her tomorrow and uh she's still in really good health and doing well so it would be a great uh a great thing, I think, for both of you to be able to meet, although I'll have to help her with the Skype situation here. Oh, well, that, that, now, wouldn't it be great to see uh, uh, Barbara? You know, at 91, Bill, when you see a parent still going strong at 91, how's that make you feel? I mean, it's got to make you feel good, good genes. Oh, oh, my God, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody in her family is, has had a long, long, healthy life, her mother and her sister and a lot of that family. You know, it's that uh, Midwestern stock. You know, they're coming out of Illinois and, and Kentucky, and uh, those that's pioneer blood, you know? They made them tough. <laughs> made to last. Well, William, yeah. w- William, Cat, it's been a lot of fun, and I hope you come back as well, because this has been a lot of fun. And I think we've only scratched the surface, but a deep conversation nonetheless. Oh, thanks, man. I, I really enjoyed it. You, thank you for having me on the show, Scott. Thank you, Bill. Okay, bye-bye. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Scott Spears Now. It's been great catching up with William Cat the greatest American hero, and so much more. And I hope his mother, Barbara Hale, does come on in the future. And I also hope Bill comes back, because he is a wealth of knowledge. And as I said, I think we just scratched the surface of his amazing life and career. But until next time, this is Scott Spears, heading for the dugout.